Hey everybody, I am super excited because today I have an old friend with me, Costis Protopapas, uh, music director, a music director and general manager. Artistic and general director. I, there That's you go. Of Opera Santa Barbara and a fantastic pianist and conductor. Hi Costis, it's so good to see you. It's been years. Hi Marco, it's great to see you too. It's been years. How long has it been? Too long. Ten years. I don't know. You were singing opera last time I saw you. <laughs> yeah, I still am just on, on a camera to to people all over the world. Well, we'll miss you. <laughs> yeah, I, I miss you too. Uh it's it's I'm really excited because you know this is a whole new venture, and you just told me off screen that I have to tell everybody. Now now the world has to know, Costis, that you love the music of angry birds that's very true <laughs> i'm so, not i'm not like uh, i don't play video games and i don't even know if angry birds qualifies I as think, one but i do have the app on my phone i it's just the right kind of um wacky activity that uh it just has your like, mind away. no relationship to anything and makes absolutely no sense it's incredibly entertaining um and uh so i was just listening to the music when i was playing i was like well that's, that sounds like fun so I actually went to Spotify and downloaded. The, there's like two albums in there. It's like Angry Birds One, Angry Birds Two, or something like that. It's like fake, some crazy stuff. I really love it. Oh god, it's amazing. <laughs> so I, I'm really excited because I, I've picked out a bunch of things that are more classically based, but maybe we'll see if we can derail some things. And there's also some Greek things because, of course, with a name like Costis Protopapas, you're certainly not French. So uh... <laughs> no. Nope. So I've got some. <laughs> Well, you got we got Marco, Marco, and Costis. It's a it's a very it's a very what can go wrong? <laughs> so, um, the music fans will go will be very angry with me because I've done three of these and I haven't ever included the Halo theme song. So I'm going to start with that. Um, obviously, everybody, this is a song that will be copyright claimed. So we're going to listen to this, talk about it, but this will be on the full unedited version rather than the uh, shortened versions.
Had you ever heard that before? I have not. That's like one of the, probably the most famous, famous, famous. I mean, this video has 44 million views. Uh, one of the most famous uh, video game songs ever written for uh, the original Xbox. So it's several, several uh, probably a decade plus years old now. Yeah, I'm not surprised it's very popular. Yeah. What are your yes, thoughts? I, what are, what are you... I, <clears throat> I, it reminds me, of, well, I mean, it's, it's, um, <clears throat> One hears a lot of things sort of like it. Uh, it's very uh, there's, a, there's a yes, I think it's a, there's a lot of trend. There are a lot of trends in currently in classical music. I mean, especially the more popular classical music, um, and I think in movies where it's a lot of it is very sort of like primal and mm -hmm, uh, modal, mm -hmm. um, and it has sort of like this kind of this rather bare melody, but it has percussion and it has these choirs and. Yeah, and this this also has this. Um, I I I don't know if this is this is what I think, but I don't know if it's actually it was intended to be that way. But it's it has this very like Irish beat to it. Oh yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, <laughs> it reminded me a little bit of um, the music from the theme from um, How to Train Your Dragon, <laughs> um, which was also like very. It's, it's I don't know. It's, it sounded like very Irish to me for some reason. I mean, I'm, I'm Greek. What do I know? But. Um, <laughs> I had, to, I had to jump in for a pops concert um, at the last minute, and that was one of the pieces. So I was like scrambling together um, uh, to to, uh, get to learn the music and figure out what's what's going on. And I, I, I mentioned that movie to um, my girlfriend's children, and um, I was like, "Have you seen this movie?" It's like, "Oh yeah, you haven't seen it." So we had to get us down and saw the saw the movie, and it was really awesome. Anyway, but the the music is the music is very very memorable. So I think that this it seems to me that I don't know if this particular music is one of the ones that th this this track is something like a sort of set the trend for other things or followed the trend. But it sounds to me like it falls into a pretty familiar trend, and it's it's quite lovely. I like it. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? So this actually, uh, so I've never, I haven't honestly, I have not played Halo. Um, Sorry, uh, but uh, Halo is uh, is it's it's about space and it's about like you know uh, this your typical like space opera fighting against the enemy and and try I, honestly I don't know I don't even know what, I don't I've never it's, played fun, Halo. it's funny that um, putting putting that in context because I think I think there's um, <clears throat> you know like sort of the ultimate example of like movie and. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some space music and you know stuff like that. It seems something like the um, uh, the uh, uh, 2001 Odyssey. Yeah, yeah, 2001 Space Odyssey. Yeah, Space Odyssey. And then they had the music from uh, from Azus Prakash and yeah, yeah, and yeah. Open fifths and so often like the 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 space music. Um, and it, like when they when you hear like a music about space or in a futuristic movie or something like that, the music is either like very abstract yeah and very bare and often it's it, it's very amorphous rhythmically mm -hmm. or um or it's very electronic yeah it's like pew, pew, doo, 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 doo. like because we are <laughs> like the future yeah you're thinking future you think it's sci-fi yeah, 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 yeah you identify space with futurism as like zero gravity and nothing is familiar and like everything yeah. is unfamiliar so <clears throat> there's something very um interesting to to be doing it, I, I mean, I've never played this video game. I've never played any video game. Really. I don't know how it works, but if this, this it, there's something that's taking place in space that is accompanied by this music, to me, it's very interesting because it, the music itself is very earthbound. I mean, if it's yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, yeah, modes are very like folk human, mm -hmm. and the chanting of the singing and stuff. Yeah, the rhythm. There's a lot of stomping in that rhythm, and there's mm -hmm. there, there can't be any stomping if there's no gravity, right? <laughs> yeah so it defies that um, no 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 but it's, it's an interesting anyway, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting to me that a, a show that takes place in space will will be accompanied by such music that is so specifically brings you into it a a down-to-earth mode if you will yeah no totally i think that that's one of the reasons why it's defied the the, the test of time too um cool all right well that's so that's the halo theme song um, let's check out, so something, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey takes place. This oh, is this a, is funny that you should, <clears throat> you should say, I, I have not played Assassin's Creed or seen, I know, I mean, I've, I know it's very popular, but, yeah. um, 
we're doing Il Trovatore by Verdi next year. Mm. So I was doing a little bit of research when I hired our director and the design team and I wanted to tell them, you know, we, we're doing like research and we was like, well, what do you want? And uh, so I was just doing research online. So I ran into some images from Assassin's Creed and um, I, I included some of those photos in the research. Really? Track, <laughs> as well as our, our illustrator who um, all our posters for next season are created, I, are created like in the form of um, uh, classics illustrated. Uh -huh. So it's like illustration that he's done like caricatures of the singers dressed in the costumes and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, like like the old classics illustration. So that's also part of the the research that I gave the illustrator to just try to explain what's on my mind. But oh, beyond that, so cool. I just don't know anything about it. Well, so Assassin's Creed is 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 a series now that's been around for many many years, and uh, t really, it's it's actually technically it's a sci-fi story yeah, no, because, because it's, you, it goes back between medieval Spain and the yeah present. yeah yeah. You yeah, step right. into this thing called the Animus, and then you live the lives of your ancestors. And so, in this particular game, it takes place in ancient Greece, which of course goes these proto Oh, okay. Because about. the one that I saw that it was, I think I, I googled medieval Spain, and that's when it came up. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Mm, right. what that, it doesn't matter which one it is, but yeah. so, so this, this is this is uh, this is called Odyssey, the Greek version. So there's Greek singing in it. What other version is there? Uh, the non-Greek version. <laughs> there's, I think there's a uh, there's um, a anything. Look, it can't be Odyssey if it's not Greek. I mean, we invented it. It's ours. <laughs> End of conversation. <laughs> Don't make me come over there. The Greeks in the chat would be very happy to hear that. Asteros, he bought a horrible ton of eclipse on podo, to son on a racoluthi, Aristitoni toro, he the hero rosi to stall mundos, if cardios proscopin, ton swan potmo. That's beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. No, I like. I really liked it. I mean, I. Um, 
I mean, I, I imagine like that the music changes when things get active in the game or whatever, right? Because that's a little bit too relaxing. I can't imagine. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's actually the introduction of the game and Icaros, the ego that you you have, is flying around and you're sitting on the edge of a. I think it plays at the end credits too, but you're actually sitting resting on a, I forget what island of of. <clears throat> their version of greece it is yeah. and uh it's just like re playing the whatever the, the loot i suppose or the um i don't know what liar. that is the liar yeah and uh and just um you know sort of absorbing oh, obviously the, obviously the the, the 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 lyrics were some form of greek um mm -hmm. like not uh, i mean it sounded like it could be homeric greek or something i don't know it certainly didn't sound like modern greek um but um also the singer didn't sound like greek um, so they, they could have got on the Greek singer, <laughs> but the voice, uh, her voice was uh, very, it was very apropos. It reminded me of some of you know the, the famous Greek singers like yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, the, yeah. It's very, very. I mean, I also noticed that some of the she's by, additional music by some Greek guys. So clearly, they they had some expertise on on the team. Yeah, so I mean, they're good. really trying to have that soundscape. You know, the the authenticity yeah. of the yeah, whether no, or not that. I think they did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So moving on. I've, uh, uh, this is called. Um, oh yes. Okay. This is from a game called Bloodborne. Uh, it is very intense. This is a. It, it's a very complicated story, but essentially, this is a. a this is a, a character theme about a, a man named Lawrence, the first vicar, and uh, things Lawrence don't. The first go what? Vicar. Lawrence. The first vicar. Lawrence, the first vicar. Things don't go especially well. Uh, and this is in Bloodborne and a lot of these games from this company called From Software. Uh, these they actually sound like modern symphonies in a lot of ways because almost every single thing there are two phases to each battle, and so there are two phases to each music. And it's really interesting. Uh, in some ways, they feel like modern symphonies to me because they incorporate two very distinct uh, movements of uh, rhythm and tempo and things. So I'm curious to hear what you'll think.
okay. <laughs> it's like Angry Birds, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Not, not, even, not even. Completely different thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's all right. It's, it's kind of... It kind of sounds like standard issue in the world of contemporary classical music. Yeah, <clears throat> that's interesting. So, so is it is it is it is it less impressive because it feels like standard classical music, or is it more like is it impressive because it's in the medium of video games, or is it not impressive because it sounds like everything you hear in your day to day? Um. I mean, I don't know. But it doesn't. Uh, the, the fact that it's in the video game doesn't really make a lot of difference to me because I don't know anything about video games. Um, it's. Uh, I, I've just heard. I guess I heard of, heard a lot of music like that. It's like there's a there's a formula. Uh, yeah. With this stuff, you know, this is certain. You know, it's uh, the men and the thing. It's and fundamentally the... pretty simple music, and it's, mm -hmm. uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's not. It's not. It, it's not. It's 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 good. It's lovely uh you know good tunes um and there's certainly a lot of craft in doing it but it's uh <clears throat> it's basically a tune it's like it's a it's sort of minimalist and then it has mm -hmm. this, this kind of chord progressions that are um they're always just a little bit a little bit weird but not too weird and they <laughs> always sound modern but they really aren't i mean it's like yeah you know, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. After ray von williams yeah uh, <laughs> that's true <laughs> so, i mean it's it's, it, it's not it I, you know, it's fine. Uh, it's good. Um, just not as interesting to me. Fair. Well, then I'll give you something else. Um, this is a guy. He's he's Greek. Chris Christodolo. That's going to be great. <laughs> you don't have to play it. It's great. It's the best. It <laughs> well, we should play it just in case he watches. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, this is called Colentitude Pond. Pond Poder, con lentitud poderosa from a game called Risk of Rain 2. Okay, um, very different from what we've listened to. Great. So.
push. Right. Um, is the um, the the target audience for this um, <clears throat> video game like fifty year olds? Fifty year olds? <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> no, it's actually it's like no. <laughs> it's like because that place. I mean, the music is like so so totally like from my <laughs> teenage years. <laughs> Like the, I mean, I could have been the Scorpions right there at the end. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think. I, I mean, I, 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 this is groovy. I quite liked it. Um, <clears throat> and I think, I think it's a <clears throat> well, nothing earth shattering here, but I think it's like it's, it's, it's a, again, it's a, it's a good thing. Why, why mess with it? And like the way it went from classical piano and that I think yeah, yeah. this part is like a um, probably an homage to Chopin. There's a Chopin prelude. Mm, 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 um, mm. Let's go. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't realize that. So, um, and uh, and then it get to go goes into that like kind of eighties. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I think it's really good. A little depressing, but good. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I realized as we were going through it, I was like, "This is oh, I got a lot of slow songs in here." Uh, I know. So... <laughs> I was gonna say, don't they have any fast music in the video games? Yeah, yeah, they do. They do. Hold on, I gotta change some things up here. All right, I'll give you fast. I'll give you fast. Check this out. You'll 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 appreciate this. Uh, I gotta make sure it's not the long one though. Is this the one? Yeah. So um, there's a game that I love called Ace Combat, and it, it sounds like what it is. It's uh, it's literally a, um, a, a fighter plane game, and you play as a fighter pilot, and uh, really you play as the as the ship, as the uh, as the plane. And uh, I'm curious to hear. I was actually blown away by this music when I first heard it. I was like, why the hell do I want to listen to music from a fighter plane game? Like it sounds really. I was really judgmental about it, but I think, uh, I think maybe you'll be surprised.
certainly faster. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. I mean, you know, I, I, if I had to stay on hold on the phone for a long time, I wouldn't mind <laughs> listening to that. Oh my God. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I like this difference. Like, it's, but the same. I mean, it's good. It's not. It's it's all you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not yeah, bad. Yeah. It's uh, it's, the, it's the sort of the same recipe as some of the other stuff, except it's got the flamenco <laughs> thing in it. it. Was good. Um, you know, the one thing is um. You know, after a while, the, the the one thing that gets a little bit um, uh, after you hear three or four of these, what really for for me, what the one thing that gets old after a while and it starts to become progressive less interesting is the sound of the synthetic strings. I know, and, and, and the synthetic everything really. Um, it's a thing. You know, I mean, I you know, the guitar sound was pretty convincing. I don't know; it may have been an actual guitar. Actually, I don't know. Um, my ears aren't that great, but everything else was stuck, clearly generated by computer. Yeah. Um, and that after a while, it's, I don't know, I think <clears throat> nothing wrong with that. It probably couldn't produce as much music as, as we produce these days. Everything had to be, you know, recorded by a symphony orchestra. But, um, and I, I imagine, I think, I think that there's some of these scores actually make it onto the concert stage and are played by. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. Um, but it's, I mean, part of the for me, part of the experience of listening to music is is somehow um, connecting with the people who play it, playing it, yeah, whoever they are. Mm -hmm. And so when the sound is so blatantly synthetic, it's like it, it it robs the like immediacy of the. I know, I know. It's a little bit. It's it's a little bit two dimensional. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know. It's, good. it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then I've got something that's uh, definitely played by real instruments for you. Uh, this Wait. is called uh, Tartaglia's Theme. It's from a game called Genshin Impact. Um, it, 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 so Tartaglia, the, the enemies of this game are actually based off of the, of the Comedia dell'Arte characters. So La Signora, Tartaglia, Pantalone, Capitano. And um, I really believe that it's it's funny. So this game gets a, a bad rap due to the fact that it's 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 called a, a gotcha game, and so gotcha games are essentially like gambling, where if you want to get a great character, you have to spend money to maybe get like ten pulls of the thing. It's it. A lot of people dislike this the concept for good reason. It's you know geared towards children and things like that. However, I um, have to make money too. It, yeah, and the music is. I I think. I, have, I personally will go on record and say that I actually believe that this is one of the big ways that we're shifting classical music, you know, from, from the gameplay and audio perspective. So, um, yeah, let's see what you think.
Not like real instruments. <laughs> some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course there is some synthetic. Yeah, near the other. I like that. I like that. Um, yeah, and I, I, I especially appreciated the the little um, fourteen sixteen section. I mean, you know, people want to bemoan that game, but that that music is is very very good. And and the thing is, so it's 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 based on a bunch of different regions uh, that they've turned into the game. So like, there's a region called Inazuma that's only Japanese themed music. Liyue is a region that only has Chinese music, and so on and so forth. And and the characters all have different themes, and so it it, it does evoke us something sort of similar to the opera idea, where like you know this idea of light motives or or character music that is telling a story about how the character feels, and so on and so forth. You know, in that particular thing, we're fighting against this Tartaglia character because he's kind of a swindler. He very much the, the Tartaglia that we know uh, of Comedia del Arte is actually not dissimilar to how Tartaglia is in the game, which is really, really fun. Um, well, and it's also ed- educational, yeah. All right, you want to do like four more? Uh, let me see what the time what? is. Let's just do one more. One more, okay, one okay. More. What do I do? I'll give you, I'll, all right, here we go. This will be good. Hold on. Okay, this is Christopher. Do you know Christopher Tin? Uh, no. He is doing, um, he's going to be doing the final act of, of Turandot for WNO in, uh, in the oh, fall. writing a new ending. Mm-hmm. I think he was commissioned and, uh, he also, and so this is a, it's, it's a song called Baba Yetu from, um, I just sent it in the thing. It's, it's from, uh, Civilization 4. It won the Grammy actually, uh, one of the first pieces to win a Grammy based on video game music, actually. So I'm very intrigued. And this is a live performance from Langolan. Gatik, na jugula 
Nice, uplifting. <laughs> yeah, very. <laughs> always, live is always better. Uh, oh, well, that's the thing. I mean, so like, well, it, so do you feel like, um, do you feel like there are limitations to like, to a, a, obviously as a person who performs live all the time, like, do you feel like there is a, a disconnect that that we have between what we hear and what we see and that it would be better to, sort of experience all of this stuff live? And, and do you feel like we're getting used to um, the sort of syn synthetic sound that may cause an emotional reaction, but is maybe not as, mm, I don't want to say pure, but not as like authentic as the real thing? Or do you think like all that matters is that someone is being moved by music ultimately? Well, yeah, I mean, I, well, I, I, I sort of all of the above, but um music fulfills all kinds of different purposes. We, we can't be living in a concert. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. Although we all, to some extent, have some soundtrack on our minds. All that Our life has a soundtrack, whether we're aware of it or not. Um, yeah. And um, well, there's a variety of topics here. And I, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not the, um, I might not be the right person to, you know, I, it, to ask this question, but it, uh, you know, I, when I was a teenager, I did um, dabble with synthesizers and the electronic organs and stuff like that. So I, you know, have, um, and that, my involvement with that only sort of broadened my interest and my passion for the music. But all those things were always, and still, synthetic sounds are, are, are not unacceptable to me, but they're. Mm -hmm. I, the emotional impact comes from the metaphor. I mean, they are really a substitute for the real thing. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's my emotional reaction is the same, except not to the same degree. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, completely original sounds um, are extremely interesting. But, I mean, I have. I mean, like the sounds in Angry Birds. I mean, that's that's not substitute for anything. It's its own thing, and it's very entertaining. Um, and uh, so I, I think music fulfills various purposes, and I think um, it is music is in, 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 in inseparable from the human psyche and experience. Um, uh, I uh, I think live or recorded is. I mean, you know, I, I listen to recorded music all the time. I yeah, of course. actually don't ever listen to recorded opera. Um, <laughs> if I listen to a proper recording, it has to be of a live performance. Uh, mm, rather than the studio. Yeah, uh, yeah, because it's, it's. I mean, I don't know. It, there's something antiseptic about um, studio recordings and that it has to be in the moment. And, yep. and uh, so, <clears throat> and this, to a lesser degree, symphonic music, I'd rather listen to a live performance. I mean, I, you know, there are studio recordings that you know you just have to hear because you know, for whatever reason. But as I, in general, for for um, I think for in general, I think if I think about it, most of the music that I listen to, whether it's world music or you know it's like jazz or you know Cuban mm -hmm. or you know Brazilian or whatever, I'd, I'd rather listen to a live performance. Um, but you know, we love music. We're like you know, anything is good. You know, anything is good. It's like if people, as long as people get moved, and people, people will listen to music. And I think that's all that matters. I mean, it doesn't matter what I think. It what you think. People are going to listen to music. It's and that's what's wonderful about it. Now, the one thing they got to say here about the live thing, though, is <clears throat> I don't know if you ever thought of it this way, but um, it, it occurs to me anytime we have a school coming to one of our performances. You, know, you get you know the ten or twelve or fourteen year olds to come mm -hmm. to the opera, especially the kids who are twelve or fourteen now, who were robbed out of about two years of normal, whatever norm normal is. Whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. Normal. <clears throat> um, that is probably the first time 
those kids are listening to any music that is not electronically amplified or modified on some to some degree. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. There is uh, the only place we can actually listen with your ears and know at technology involved, except of course the art and science of acoustics and acoustic engineering, which is the whole itself. But our instrument is the theater. <laughs> I think that's the only time that um, uh, a general, not was a good or bad. I'm not, I, you know, I don't, I don't judge, and I, you know, we're busy. Uh, but the uh, that's the only time that some of those kids, that, and that might actually very well be the last time they'll ever hear music without a phone or without a digital or without or without <laughs> you know without amplification and the soundboard, yeah, right? right, you know, the right. Rock or jazz or you know whatever, it's always amplified. You know, yeah, outdoors, indoors, you know, or or if it's through your earbuds or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the the one thing that I think is different from for live music, and that's why I think it's not about you know really knowing the music or caring for the music. It was about the acoustical experience. It's the physical act of listening to the music is different. Um, and one of them is just the dynamic spectrum. Yeah. Um, you will, the only place where you will hear music played softly is at a symphonic mm-hmm. chamber or concert or an opera. Yeah. Um, and there's really nothing, there is no other experiencing than listening to, I remember one moment in uh, the Trovatore performance of the Chicago Lyric a few years ago with Tamara Wilson mm-hmm. uh, in the last act she sang so softly and the orchestra matched her and you are in this space that seats are on 3400 people mm-hmm. it's packed and everybody's quiet and you can hear that little silk thread of sound and that experience you never forget right. and you're never mm-hmm. gonna get that you know unless you actually go to a concert hall and be quiet Mm-hmm, and not mm-hmm. have the music not be amplified, you'll never hear it again. And I'm not saying that not everybody's going to be a fan, right? I mean, would, not everybody would like opera, and that's fine. Um, but just for the just for that experience, so you've had that once happen, is worth checking out a live classical performance with actual instruments. In front of that, you. everything's great. We love music. Any music yeah. will do. Yeah. <laughs> do you feel like context matters? Like, do you feel like, like, for, like, do you feel like if you listen to these pieces, would they mean more to you if you knew what was happening, like directly in the moment or like with the visuals? Or do you think it doesn't matter? Uh, do, music is music. Do, there's no doubt that context matters. Um, right. the, you, the human experience is, 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 is a combination of things. There's nothing isolated. Um, so uh, there's no doubt that, you know, it's, I listen to this music with different ears that than the people who play the video game and they have an association with it. I mean, I think their experience is, is probably more complete and more complex, mm-hmm. but it's possible that I'm hearing something that they don't, they're not hearing because I don't have a context. So the only context is mental my context. previous experiences or what's in my head. Right. So exactly. I'm, I'm focusing on different things. And also again, you know, the, the, I think music is, um, even when music is not supposed to be the, the main event, mm-hmm. it always shapes the event. Right. Um, so, yeah, when you go play a video game, you go play the video game. You're not going to a concert, right? So the music is no word. But the music substantially alters how that comes down. And better music, better matched music or whatever, more inspired music, you'll have more fun. Um yep. And that's why I was I was angry. Um, a lot of people were angry a couple of years ago. Where I don't know if they changed that now, but there was a, well, at least one time where in the Oscars they <clears throat> they decided they they were not going to like broadcast the best song and best soundtrack during the prime time. Oh, you know, how like, the Oscars yeah, the yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, yeah. Broadcast yeah. a certain part of it, so not all the categories make it to the live thing, mm-hmm. and they took the music and songs out and. It's like, what are you talking about? I mean, that, you know, music is half of the movie. Fundamentally. Like the, um, was, well, I think it was the, um, maybe the Tartaglia, or one of the, one of the songs. Um, it's, uh, it reminds you of um, 
Ennio Morricone's music in the, in this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. Those, those movies. I would, can you imagine the Godfather without the music, or <laughs> or uh, the or the good, the bad, the ugly without the music? <clears throat> or Titanic without the music. Right, I know that's um, true. So anyway, so um, go forth and listen to music. <laughs> Cosis, before we go, do you want to tell everybody about yourself a little bit and and where where they can well not find you, but you know go go see a performance. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we don't have that many. We're a small opera company in Santa Barbara, California. Um, you can find out more information on our website, operasb.org. Um, or you can, we, we have a fairly active uh, Facebook um, page. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're a lot of fun. We, uh, we put a little great content out. So even mm -hmm. if you can't be in Santa Barbara and see all of our shows, um, you can subscribe to our newsletter, um, um, info at operasb.org. And we send about one email every week. And there's always content. There's videos. There's fun stuff. Um, um, you know, we're here in uh, little Santa Barbara, California. We're having a great time. <laughs> um, have a lot of fun. If you haven't been to Santa Barbara, make the trip. It's worth it. But not in May and June. <laughs> Wait, why? <laughs> uh, because May, Gray, and June gloom. We haven't seen the oh. sun here in the last few weeks. <laughs> Uh -oh. It's it's called and it's called you know how um you know when in the in the the, the song Sinatra song the lady the lady is a tramp it says hey yeah. it's California it's cold and it's damp that's <laughs> why the lady is a tramp I think they're talking about Santa Barbara <laughs> with May and June the rest of the time is lovely well so so if you want to go to Santa Barbara don't go in May and June and definitely make yeah. the trip July because, through uh, April is great. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Costis. I really appreciate you coming oh, it was on. It's great and... to see you, man. I'm glad yeah. you're doing so well. And don't be a stranger now. I will. I will. I appreciate yeah. you being here. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. I thoroughly okay. enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Right. See ya. Take it easy, brother. Bye. Bye. See ya.